Generation Zero Update 1.15 is now out live on all platforms. If you want to read the patch notes at your own leisure, there will be a link down below in the description box for you to do so. Let's get right into it. So January's finally kicked off into full gear and we're back in business with another update. Although this month is light on content, we wanted to make sure we got some bug fixes out to you, especially as some of them were quite annoying and things that you flagged for us. Additionally, we've taken a balance pass on rivals dropping experimental weapons. Yeah, they nerfed the drop rate. We've seen both from our data and what everyone is saying that we needed to tweak the drop mechanics to be more in line with the rarity slash power that experimental weapons are meant to portray. To that end, we made three notable changes. We've reduced the chance of rivals being generated by machines killing players and increased the chance for players killing machines in a region. Experimental weapons drop chance should now be correctly tied to rival level and machine type. The lowest chance is now a level 1 prototype, class hunter, and the highest is a level 4 apocalypse class tank. Restricted experimental weapons to only drop to players who are level 25 and above. Primarily, we saw that experimental weapons were dropping too often, even at lower levels, and it was creating an experience where players would get the best weapons very early on and it would make the game too easy. I wouldn't say too easy, but yeah. We want players to still have a chance at getting them and using them, but not so early on that it damages the experience. To be clear though, if you are below level 25 and have an experimental weapon, you'll still be able to use it. Please let us know your feedback about how these changes feel once you start fighting rivals after the patch. But before we get into the bug fixes, a quick note that we'll be rerunning our holiday event from 10 a or 10 o'clock CET today until 10 o'clock CET on Monday, February 3rd. We had a lot of new players come in during the holidays that may have missed out, so consider this your last chance. Be sure not to miss out. I don't know what happens during the holiday event, by the way, but okay. So bug fixes. Weapons. Fixed an issue where you couldn't reload immediately after exiting a bicycle. Fixed an issue where it was possible to attach any ammo or attachment to any weapon. Damn it! Fixed an issue with aiming down sights with the 12 gauge pump shotgun that resulted in a black bar appearing on screen when wearing the worn flannel jacket or elegant tailcoat. Tweaked the way in which flame damage was applied to machines. Fixed a rare issue where weapon switching with only one main weapon equipped could unequip the weapon. Fixed an issue where player hair could appear distorted when looking through a scope. Fixed an issue where thrown items would sometimes disappear in mid-air but still work appropriately. UI, community report, fixed an issue where sometimes machine components would remain highlighted after leaving tech view or where the counter for adrenaline shots would become negative or with the storage box incorrectly counting the number of attachments on a weapon against the item space available. We've toned down the HUD filter from the gas mask. Remove the gas mask HUD filter when seeing your character in third person example emoting on a bike. Added tooltips on how to cycle views when using a vision module. Fixed an issue where stats may not show on apparel when cycling through variations. Or where the bike icon could get stuck on the map and in world if you try to spawn a bike multiple times. Or where both challenge tree tabs were highlighted when switching between menus. Or where a rival nameplate would disappear if something blocked your line of sight. Or with the scroll bar behavior in the collectibles menu. Also fixed an issue with interaction prompts throughout the world. Updated controller mappings to indicate what button was re reload where your control options appeared twice in the settings menu. Also fixed an issue where your screen could mostly go white if you used the medkit while being hit by a flamethrower. And where the damage over time effect would not scale appropriately to your field of view setting. They fixed the mission with that. <clears throat> mission with that. A bug with that. On to missions. I just woke up literally two minutes ago. My alarm wasn't working. <clears throat> Community report fixed an issue where the Minkin Bunker mission could not be completed from the warboard. Fixed an issue where the Skadavin warboard mission could become blocked if items were picked up in the wrong order. Or with mission objective counters not properly syncing when going from multiplayer to single player resulting in blocked missions. Updated missions to auto-complete from your log if all acquired. 
sorry, required mission objectives have been achieved instead of being stuck in your log. Or where flying objects in the road to Saltham could not be completed after finishing all objectives. Fixed an issue where players' broken missions would not be properly fixed if they immediately joined another player's multiplayer session after an update instead of starting their own session first. Fixed an issue where Beyond the Barricade could get blocked for the host if a client picked up a mission item in the host's game. I, I guess they weren't able to get Beyond the Barricade. Haha, <laughs> the irony. <clears throat> Fixed an issue where if a player left the game during the resistance while in multiplayer and started the game in single player, the mission would disappear from that log. Cleaned up some erroneous POIs, points of interest in a few missions. Challenges. Fixed an issue where challenge progression could be carried over to a new character after deleting all previous old, previously old characters. Characters. Fixed an issue where from another player's perspective, a player would still use the holding animation after a flare had been held for the maximum amount of time, but had already been dropped. Or where the jog animations may not play after sprinting and then running out of stamina. Or where sometimes your weapon would stay in your hands while emoting. Or where players could infinitely revive themselves without any adrenaline shots. Damn it. Or fixed a few issues around getting stuck on a bicycle and attempting to dismount. Cleaned up several reload animations that were acting glitchy. Fixed an issue where NPCs would not respond to the power outage during the fighting the cold mission. Machines. Fixed an issue where machines would continually attack a player's last known position when downed. Very aggressive. Killed an issue where tanks would attempt to fire their missiles at a player when the player was well outside of the tank's weapon range. Or where a single destroyed tick would sometimes count as multiple when playing in multiplayer. Or where in specific circumstances machines attacking the hotel would not deal damage. I wish I had that issue because I still haven't beaten that mission. Damn it. Fixed a few issues with how the Apocalypse class Hunter's flamethrower would look from certain angles. Or where tank cluster mines were not detonating for client players in multiplayer. Or where tank cluster mines would sometimes materialize out of thin air. That's happened a lot. Community report for the world. Fixed an issue where dead and alive machines could disappear when looking away from them and then looking back. Fixed an issue where ticks would sometimes spawn outside of a house instead of inside. Fixed an issue where players would not automatically respawn when falling into a lake near the military compound and Angeris Church. Community report fixed an issue where the KVM-89 squad automatic weapon ammo was not dropping on Ostertorn, Main Island. Fixed an issue where players had trouble picking up the weapon in a small storage room at the Savard Radar Mast. Fixed plenty of issues regarding floating objects, clipping objects, or inconsistent collision. Fixed issues regarding players accessing slash unlocking safe houses in single player after having entered them but not unlocked them in multiplayer. Or where swings would sometimes act as if possessed. <laughs> That's funny. Where televisions would still be on after the power went out in the hotel. Just saying. Some poltergeist shit right there. Fixed several instances of loot containers that were unable to be looted. Where it was possible to continually respawn a relay beacon on Himfjall. Fixed a few instances of machines spawning and getting stuck inside buildings. Yeah, we don't want that. Localization, voice, and audio. Community report fixed an issue where the air raid siren could end up constantly playing. Added translations for the overdrive firing mode on the experimental M46 Kapist SMG. Updated various collectibles and mission items to either include or remove text based on their description. Fixed a few issues with subtitle text disappearing too quickly or staying on screen for too long. Fixed an issue with inconsistency between run and sprint in the settings menu, or where the tutorial flow on PC would mention left stick while using a mouse and keyboard. Fixed several punctuation issues. Fixed issues where several audio logs would show a giant block of text when using subtitles instead of pacing the text out. 
or with the player's heartbeat from sprinting, still playing when emoting or getting on a bicycle, or where overdrive sound effects from the experimental M46 Capist SMG extended too early in multiplayer, or where VO may not be heard during the Ghosts of the Past mission, or with VO and subtitles overlapping the credits during the Behind the Curtain mission, fixed an issue where sometimes audio log VO would reverberate while playing in a bunker, fixed an issue where players' footsteps wouldn't play while reloading. Crashes. Community report fixed. An issue where players could crash when retrieving the experimental clock E17 from their storage box. Fixed an issue where players would be stuck on the login screen after crashing and various other crash fixes. And that's the generation team. So, if you liked the video, as always, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. I'll make sure when you play the game, the game reverts back to patch 1.0, day one. You don't want that. And uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel, naturally, that would be wonderful now, wouldn't it? But if not, thanks for stopping by anyways. And as always, take care, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.